It was a time of war, where one desperate man's journey into unknown would take him to places he never thought possible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was my attempt to do like one of those trailer intros. What's going on? Look in the background behind me. Look at all this. And so what is all this? What the hell is all this? Well, some of you will get it straight away. That have been following the channel for a long time. And some of you that don't follow the channel will be thinking, what the hell? Is he? It's gone like Breaking Bad. He's <laughs> making, making crystal meth in his garage or something. Um, no, we're not doing that, by the way. Jesus, I'll get caught up. YouTube will detect that in the algorithms and <laughs> chuck me to the bottom of the pile. No change there. What we're doing is we are making waxes, paste waxes. So this channel, when I started, had a real passion for this, became a real passion of mine, and I've not made a wax for a couple of years, which is unforgivable. It's a bit like P. Diddy's aftershave. Um, I just got the urge to make a wax, and all this stuff has been packed away for a long, long time. And I'm, in this video, gonna go through and show you everything that you need to make waxes and all the stuff that I've got. Because <coughs> it'll be interesting. So down here, I'm very low on this. We've got T1 grade Carnuba wax. Always get T1 grade. It's more pure. It's taken from a different part of the Carnuba tree or plant or whatever it's called. Um, and it's just the best one to get. Beeswax. <laughs> If you're going to get beeswax, get white beeswax from mothers, okay? That's what I've found. A whiter beeswax is better. The more yellow it is, the more sticky it is. Here's one. This came in Joe's Auto Glands kit. Most of the other ones are yellow. And I've just, just something I've noticed about beeswax. I don't like using beeswax at all, even the white mother's one. I find it makes um, waxes more grabby and more uh, more sticky even after the wax is cured and i think that's because the, the beeswax is an impure or organic kind of wax that you know however it's made whatever the bees do if they crap it out or god knows what <laughs> um next thing is paraffin paraffin um and i've got bucket loads of that. Paraffin's an important wax. It, it's very hydrophobic. It will give you, I think it's around about 110 degree kind of contact water angles. So a pure paraffin wax would bead like crazy on application. You'd see a big difference in the beading with a pure paraffin wax than you would with a carnauba wax. Where the carnauba waxes, they don't bead that much actually. They're a little bit hydrophobic. I'm just mixing these up because they're all they've been in here for a while so they've sort of clumped together a little bit and i've got one flake of another wax in there and that is candelia wax as you can see here quite hard to get quite hard to get hold of candelia wax i've come to the conclusion again that candelia wax doesn't really bring much to the party okay so None of these waxes, in my opinion, other people will disagree, bring much to the party. But Carnuba wax, very nice. It's very rock hard. It's it's rock hard. Okay. <laughs> um, now, paraffin, you don't want to use too much paraffin wax. It's white, it's smeary. When you mix it with oil, it can be greasy and leave like ghosty buffer trails and all that sort of stuff. A bit like... Um, it's just not a great looking wax, okay? It's quite opaque, quite dull. So you put tiny amounts of it in to make your wax a little bit more hydrophobic. It's also quite a soft wax, um, so it can soften down. But you're typically gonna use small amounts of, of paraffin, you know, probably no more than 5% um, in your overall thing. Now 5% would be very high. The next one, this wax, I call this the goat cheese wax because it stinks like goat cheese. This is another crystalline 
um, wax, Montan wax. Again, a very hard wax that is not hydrophobic, but it's very glossy. It's kind of similar to Carnuba, but it's kind of a purer, purer looking wax. It's a very um, brittle wax, and you need to balance. When you start using more Montan than Carnuba, you're going to have a wax that's going to be prone to cracking and split, splitting down the middle. So typically, I would, just as a thing to get you started, use about half, at least half the amount of um, Montan that you use to Carnuba. I would make a wax where you, <coughs> your majority of your wax is Carnuba wax. Just to give you a rough idea, if you've got 100 units of, of materials, about 30 units of that would be wax. So then you could break it down, you could have 20 Carnuba, you know, uh, seven montane three paraffin something like that is a sensible starting point okay then you've got 70 percent left for other materials okay so it just gives you a good tip a good clue next up here we have a magnetic hot plate stirrer okay sounds very complicated um you can raise the temperature of it up here so now all the different temperature and it will read you out the temperature it's got a built-in temperature probe very important it always lags behind it's always as it re as, as the liquid warms up this has to read it so it's always lagging um, and it has a magnetic stirrer so you put your beaker on there you know with your stirrer in it and and it will spin around and stir it and you it's also handy to have little glass rod to stir it yourself as well glass stirring rod won't affect the temperature of the product won't raise it or drop it okay and these are all cheap things that you can buy cheap lab lab stuff i started out using this little wax star wax melter with a little <laughs> turkey baster temperature probe and that is, that's about 10 pounds it's a great little wax melter that is you can get started making waxes with that little wax style, you can buy it on Amazon. Don't ask me for links, guys. I can't keep up with stuff like that. Um, you know, go and Google it. It's cheap and it's a great little thing, okay? So you can do a lot of great things with that. It's useful to, to as well if you wanna heat other components and add them slightly warmer into here, um, like solvents. Um, now we're sort of getting along here to materials. Wax dyes. So these are cheap kind of dyed waxes that you can put in. They're already they're already pigmented waxes. I don't like using them because I think they're using like paraffin. Um, and this you don't have to use that much, but you're changing by one or two percent the the wax, and you're putting unknown waxes in your wax just to change the colour. Um, you could use a solvent dye use a solvent dye it looks like it looks like some sort of drug that one um you know a solvent based dye would be a better way of doing it if you want to I've, i was never that bothered about um about colors in the wax really um lots of measuring things some speciality ingredients over here some forms of silicon carriers modified forms of silicon some resins some other things <clears throat> here we have some carrier oils organic carrier oils so grape seed oil apricot seed oil almond almond oil so a lot of nut oils this whole thing with like uh, oils you just want to find a good pure oil um you know but you read some of the ingredients and they've got like uh you know the jarra jarra exotic jarra jarra seed bird oil taken from you know a rare nut found only in the uh island you know in papua new guinea on mount fujukamu there's a lot of bs around all these oils you know how you can't test what, what you're testing for when you get all these different oils what are you what are you what are you doing to test them you're seeing if one's slipperer than the other one's more glossy than the other I can say now, I didn't know any of this when I started, but that's all BS that is anyway. Just want a nice, if you're gonna use an organic oil, I don't tend to use organic oils now. Just want a reasonable quality, reasonably pure organic oil. Nut oils are quite good. 
Um, what the hell's that? <laughs> what else? I've got some with the old auto glands wax making kit, which you can spot. I don't know if they still sell it. It was great. It was like a way of getting all of the ingredients just going. It was only about 50 quid. And you get enough ingredients to go and make all these different types of waxes. Um, they had like a durability polymer. It's gone off now. Shows you a durability polymer. You can see what it's kind of doing. It stiffens up, you know, and it will fortify. And, you know, it will make everything last longer. Um, but the air's got in there and it's gone into goo. So polymers, if you overheat them, or the air gets at them and they expire, it shows you what can happen to them. So that, that's, that needs to be binned. I need to be careful with a lot of my materials. Over two years sitting in the garage, they've gone off. Um, some, some of the things are okay. The solvents will be fine. Those I'll throw away. Here's some examples of some solvents. D40, low aromatic. Uh, that will evaporate with a lower flash point. Okay. Um, and there's D80. So D80 is a solvent that a lot of wax makers will use. It will, it will vaporize. It's low aromatic, which means it doesn't stink like petrol. And it will vaporize a little bit slower. Uh, I find if you just use D80, the wax won't cure quick enough. Uh, I used to mix D40 and D80. If you use D40 on its own, you leave the lid off, the top of the wax will go all dry. So it's like a balancing act. Somewhere in the middle seemed to be a good balance for me. Or you could use something like D60, or I've got an ISO paraffinic. So it's like a synthetic paraffin version, you know, modern solvent, man-made solvent, if you like. Um, I've got Solban 40 and Solban 60 that, that I've tried there. They're fine. I still think you're better off blending. don't know why, but you're better off blending a light one with a heavy one still, I think. And Carchem, Carchem have got their own kind of one, which has an 80 flash point, so it's like D80. I don't know if they still sell that. They, call it, they used to call it Phase. I've got the fra fragrance and dyes from the kit from the auto glands still. They're water missable ones, actually. That was from their QD kit. I don't know if they still sell that. That was a really cool product. Um, got some other things over here. This is like a wetting agent. So if your wax is too dry and it's cracking out, you can mix tiny amounts of wetting agent in it, which will stop that a little bit. And that can help stop them from pulling in as well when they dry and some limonene which is a really good useful solvent you can just use tiny amounts of limonene in the wax maybe about one percent overall or even less uh, it's a really nice cleansing solvent that will make the wax slightly easier to remove well that's hard to spot the difference but i think it's worth having a little bit of limonene i've got various oxides over here that i've got nothing to do with wax making they're part of my other tests ferric oxide um and I've got some water miscible solvents that are still working, still working. Stuff like that. I need to check them, but they, they've, they've probably gone off. But they are, some of those are anti-static agents for um, spray products, water-based spray products, or I think, like, I don't know what the other one is. It's like some, it might, some form of silicon, water miscible silicon that you can put, like quaternary silicon, I think, that you can put in like a detail spray, something like that. Um, that's most of my stuff. I've got some jars here. I did have loads more jars. I don't know what's happened with those. Little sample bottles that are always useful. I still have all these scents. So the kings of scents. If you ever want scents, essential oils, Get them from this company called FJAS because that's all they do. They're a they're a um, scent manufacturer. They have all these amazing scents. I've got eucalyptus, but they've also got really funky ones. If you want, if you want like fun things, peppermint, you know, mango and coconut, coffee candy, fresh coffee, chocolate orange, marshmallow. I used to be into so into all them. All trying all this stuff. It's great fun, isn't it? It's a great hobby. Hobbies are what hobbies are what life is all about, guys. You don't need me to tell you that. But the thing that makes people interesting in my books or differentiates some people from other people are the people that follow their hobbies 
Like they really grab in, grab into them and they go in and just charge in and I've, you know, I do that. But my problem is I maybe have too many hobbies and then I, you know, the people that are successful really devote themselves to one thing, don't they? And they go in for the whole lives and gain all this kind of knowledge and get a lot of joy out of it. Well, I went balls deep into wax making for a couple of years and um, as part of the channel, I think. And then I sort of left it behind a little bit and the whole industry moved away from wax making, you know, and has. So, yeah, I just haven't made a wax for ages and I want to do this today out of passion. Now, the problem is remembering everything. I was just going through my old notes. Look at this, see this book here, this is quite interesting. What's this from? What is this? Horsepower test. Horsepower test. Now, if anyone hears the word horsepower tests and can remember what video that's from, you are a proper forensics detailing follower. Um, now, CG Woolly, AF Deluxe, KKD, Rag Dryer, Big Yellow, WM4, Rag Pluff, Fireball, Geon, Purple Man, Rag Av. <laughs> what are all those things, guys? They're drying towels. So this is the drying towel video. And this is measuring how much kilograms of water all of the towels pulled up. Okay, it's interesting, isn't it? The woolly mammoth pulled the most up but it's the biggest towel so it's not a relative thing there um, but I think I did some calculations to take that into account I don't know um, so that's really interesting so that's a very old set of notes and I'm going to go through go through all these notes in a second because there'll be some fun stuff in there and if I go through this book it's got all my notes for like <coughs> videos going back to the Koch Chemi the Koch Chemi brand review, Revive Auto Apocry 3, Leather Mega Tests. What's that? Oh, that's PF, PF, what's PF? Perfect Finish versus S20. It's my notes there on testing stuff, gloss testing. We did it all properly, guys. We don't, there's no BS on this channel. I ever go, I ever go. <laughs> it might not be like, it might not be perfect. I might not always get it right, but I have a go. <laughs> Story of my life. Uh, so there's that's bringing me a lot of joy, seeing all of those um, notes that I made for the old videos. Now, I have to be careful because I've made all my notes here on the towels. I'm just going through everything. So here's my marking criteria, size, safety, speed, volume, method, <laughs> quality, border, value for money. What's this? Bone dry rating. What does that mean? Filming, linting. Jesus. Horsepower, performance, ring out ability. Jesus, John. What the fuck? What was going through my mind when I was doing that? It was how to do it properly, but it's a bit over the top, isn't it? <laughs> Any bloody cloth. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay. Look, how to snow foam a car. That was like one of the first videos I did that did some decent views. That's a quick video where I just made that's it. That's all my notes for that video. Scribble down some notes, press play on the video, away you go. Press record even. Oh my goodness. So on this page, I've got to put my hand there. Forensics formula. In fact, let's not cover this up. One thing I, I think I was the first to do is when I made waxes, I put the full ingredients there. No one else ever wanted to do that. Um, so let's get these out of the way. <laughs> so this is forensics formula 001. Solvent hotter, better mixer. Oh, those are my notes of things I needed to improve on. So you can see here, 14 nuba, that means 14% 14 or 14 grams per 100 gram, two beeswax, 12 coconut oil, five almond oil, 
what's that? Oh, two kerosene, 10 odorless white, and five, <laughs> five lighter fluid. <clears throat> um, that's hilarious. That first wax that I made was actually half decent, though. It looked half decent. Um, it was there, it was half decent, that wax. It was a bit like throwing a dart in the board. It sort of, sort of works. Um, it's interesting. Well, my percentages don't add up there though, do they? Is that to 50? Is that to 50 grams? 17, 16 add 17 is, uh, oh, that's to 50. So you'd have to double everything there. So I'm making tiny little brews. So, so it's effectively, everything would need to be doubled there, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's, that works out to 50 rather than 100. So that would be double, so it would be 28 plus 4. That's about right. Like I was saying at the start of the video, about 30% solids, waxes. Um, and we're roughly, so we're roughly third solids, third oil, third solvent with, with that sort of wax. And that will get you something that kind of half works, but it's lighter fluid. <laughs> We've got forensic formula number two. Still using the lighter fluid. Didn't really change much there. Oh, I can show you, look. This is all based on 15, doubling the measurements, roughly. Don't know why I did that, it's a stupid thing to do. I can see all, the, all of them. So I've got three, four, five, very basic. So we go over to number five, 12 Nuba 2B. 20 coconut oil, I think. 30 kerosene. I think I've just moved over at that point to odorless kerosene, which is just better. Um, yeah, very interesting. Let's put that one away. <laughs> this is bringing back lots of old memories for me. So I should keep this notebook, notepad. I should have got a big notepad and just put them all in there. Very interesting. Okay, guys. So this was just a sentimental recap. I'm going to sit there and go through some of the other um some of my i've got I have another load of loose papers i'm going to go through I'm going to get to a certain point and i'm going to make a very simple wax again what i want to do is make a nice high carnauba grainy wax very simple wax and i just want it to dry cure so i'm going to try and minimize the amount of carrier if you like i, I want less carrier more solvent i want a very dry spreadable grainy wax that cures out that's my aim uh i might i'll fire up the camera when i finish making it you've seen all the wax making videos okay guys thank you which is why i'm all for uh our way of life our liberal secular democratic values uh, i'm all for the united kingdom where i'm not for it is english nationalism scottish nationalism uh and so on and so forth and, you know, that was some of those have been right Yeah, you bugger. Let's go and try and get as many calls as we can uh, before we end the show for today. Andrew is waiting to speak to us from Sally. Tell us what you're Oh, my dude, hi. Peter. Hi, Peter. Uh, thank you for really, what, what I want to say is that uh, my family calls me Peter. Actually, I've gone down to Northern Nigeria because mm. of the fact that they were calling me. Oops. First, into the army. Oh. Then, I was taken to the Sudan. Which is not Africa. He was an engineer and actually also tried to um, put in mind to the death of But he defied us. He felt. So while the wax is just heating up, guys, I'm going to let that melt down. When it starts to melt, I'll add the carrier. And then what I will do is add the solvent at the end. And I have one polymer that I have to put in as it's cooling below a certain temperature because it goes too high it'll blob out so it's pretty simple to make though this uh, i don't know if it's going to be a good brew or not um yeah i don't know it might be a bit dry is what i'm thinking anyway 
while you're here, look at these. So this is a tin that I kept. Ow, come on, open up. So this is a few years old. So it's interesting, isn't it? This is one of my brews as well. So you look at it and it looks good. So you can see the graininess of it. And it's still there. It's got that little bit of shine to it. So two years later, if you'd have, you know, this wax is sitting on your shelf because they do, don't they? A lot of people buy wax and it sits there for years. Um, so let's just take a little, let's cut a bit of sponge off. A bit of dirty sponge and all. Um, let's see if this old wax works. And this number is high, so this must be one of my last brews before I stopped. I can't remember. Let's try over here. It's lovely. See the good bounce. Just to see how that cures. Because most of the time, if they're wet, they might not cure properly. But anyway, let's leave that outside for a little bit. And something else that you might be interested in, this one here, <coughs> excuse me, my hay fever is a nightmare today. It's like pollen levels are through the roof. Wax number two, this isn't one of my waxes. What this is, is a prototype of the Autoglim UHD ultra high definition wax years before it was released to the public. I got a little sample from Autoglim just to play around with and feed back to them on it, which is very nice. Um, so that's a rare thing that is. Keep that, you know what I mean? Like in 20 years time or something, that might be something cool or might make a very good giveaway for one of my patrons. Um, Auto, Autoglim also gave me one of the last produced previous HD waxes, you know, the predecessor to UHD. So that'll be a cool giveaway as well. If I ever get back up there, I'm going to take it and try and get some signatures from anyone at Autoglim that will sign it. Um, anyone, you know, <laughs> be a delivery bloke there. Excuse me, can you sign this? Um, no, they'll sign it for me, hopefully. And then that'll be an amazing prize to give away later on, won't it? Like, last batch of HD wax to go out of Autoglim. Um, and the first batch, or one of the prototype batches of the, the new UHD wax. So that's cool. Let's put the lid back on my wax. I'm quite, quite impressed with that. I'm quite impressed with the fact that it hasn't dried out and it's still... There, and I'm quite impressed with how it looks. But the problem is, that's just starting to melt down now. So if we just put the little stirrer in. See, it's not quite ready yet. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> right, playing around with that. It's not melted enough. Once it melts down, we'll turn the little magnetic stirrer, stirrer on. So let's have a look. Can you see the line? Has it dried? Interesting. No, it's still wet. What you want it to do is, you want to see that cure happening a bit quicker. It's important. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off. Okay guys, so now I've put the carriers and the solvents in. And I'm just going to let this now um, blend at around about 80 degrees for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to turn the heat off and cool, let it cool down. At this point now I've got the carriers and the solvents in there. I don't want to be in the garage because all the solvents will get in your lungs. So I'll come out, we'll just raise this up a little bit to ventilate it. 
and then I'll in 15 minutes I'll pop back in um, put a tiny amount of another product in and let it cool down to 60 when it gets below 60 it'll be ready to pour okay guys so I'm coming back into the garage now and what I'm gonna do our temperatures dropped so we won't be vaping out quite so much solvent um, but you don't want to be in here for too long we've got a good blend there and now all I want to do is just put a couple of drops of this in just gonna roughly measure this out just need two grams worth that'll do okay so I'm gonna put this in right and we're gonna leave that to keep blending the temperature will drop it will keep dropping slowly when we get below 60 degrees, I'll get the pots out and we'll pour it. Okay guys, we're down to 57 degrees. I've turned everything off and we're gonna pour. Um, you know, wear heat, heat proof gloves normally guys, but um, this isn't even hot, so I'm just gonna pour this. So we've, worked, we've got a very hot liquid here, so we wanna be reasonably careful. So then we're gonna get a lovely nice pour. And put the rest in there. Can we get good pause with this? A bit more in there. Nice and smooth. You can prime these pots and do all that. I ain't gonna bother with that. And I just tip the rest in there. And I can test it. There's that thing. Come on, so. Then, there we go. Now, this is a bit where you want to work quite quick to clean this out before the wax cools. No nice way to do this, unfortunately. You've got to get it all out. Do you want to work clean every single time? It's a messy thing, wax. And of course, a little bit of solvent that you use to put in there will help clean this out. So I guess a bit of solvent on here. Still got it. Awesome. Still got it. Need a lot of this. So, we shall leave these to cool now. Okay guys, so we're all packed up and the waxes should have set a little bit. Still hot, but I can show you them. It's collapsing in the middle where it shrinks. That's okay. You can stagger the pour, can't you, to avoid that. So I could top it up now to make the old ice rink finish. Um, so what do I think of this? I think it's going to be okay. I was worried it might be 
the old ice hockey puck. So I've just pulled some into here that we can use. It's just, oh, let's just get a cloth. Got a little bit of space on this panel. That wax I laid out earlier on cured after about 20 minutes, but it has no hydrophobicity, which is no good. Well, a little bit, but I'll show you. Anyway, so that's. You see that? So we're picking up the wax. That's nice, actually. It's grainy, quite dry. This is an open thing. That's okay. So let's have a look down here. It's good. It's fine. So what I'm hoping is that this wax will cure a bit quicker and be a little bit more hydrophobic. You can see there, it's okay. That's okay. It's very hard, which is what I'd expect. So it might need a little bit more oil to soften it down a little bit. So as I'm pushing the wax, it sort of secretes liquid, which is part of the solvent and stuff. You want to soften it a bit more so it's a little bit more paste-like, just a tad. That's actually okay though, man. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's about right. You could get it a bit softer, but it wouldn't matter. That's within the range of what's acceptable. Just interested how it cures. So anyway, that's, you know, this is an ongoing thing, isn't it? This is the joy of making waxes. You know, it's part of the passion. You've got to keep pushing, keep trying stuff. And each, it's very time consuming as well. Uh, ever since doing the first wax video four or five years ago, I still get about 10 emails a week with, please send me wax formula, latest wax formula with all the materials. You know, and I don't mind helping people. And I reply to a lot of those emails, but part of this is about you exploring it and figuring it out. You know, if you're just asking someone to give you the formula so you can jump straight to the end game, you know, you're not, you've got no interest in it, have you? should be about you know, enjoying the process. So if you're interested in wax making, we've got a whole section of wax making videos on this channel. And some of those videos give you the complete recipes up to a certain point. So, which is, was never done before. So if you're interested in it, you can get started and it will get you to a really good starting point. Beyond that, it's down to yourself to kind of explore materials, make contacts. And, you know, if you make more friends you can make that make waxes, you know, you can share ideas and information and share the stuff that you learn um, and enjoy it. That's it. Don't, you know, don't get into it just for the end game of making a wax you can sell and make money because you'd be better off just going to one of the, you know, getting a company to make it for you. So um, that's it. I'm going to play around for a little bit longer and see how this uh, wax behaves. So great to get back into wax making. It's such a nice sunny day. I'm going to go and do a bit of sunbathing as well. Um, too hot now to clean the car. I think I'll probably I'm going to clean the red peril off tomorrow and I might bring it in and just do a light decon and a very light polish on it. Just maybe, possibly. We'll see. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye now.